that. So the question is like, how good is DNM of a carry and RRL of a mid that they can carry with these people being uncomfortable? And it'll probably take a couple of weeks for them to become comfortable. And I think the thing is with, with the caliber of player, the DNM and RRL are, they can carry hard. And then Aikstra, I mean, he's a five. Who gives a shit? He can't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, like you mentioned before, Dota the two, this guy's a crafty veteran. It was so wild to see his name back on this roster. This is somebody I was casting when I was first casting NEL games back in the day. You know, he was on like wheel wreck, well, whistling and stuff yeah. like that. He's a qualifier mercenary for sure. So to see him back in action, you know, it's like, all right, old dogs back at it yet again. Yeah. So we see some interesting picks out here. So let's talk about. So Bloodseeker, the biggest change that was made, I believe, was the rupture deals damage again instantly, which I think they've reverted this back and forth literally double digits time, uh, double digit double digit times in the last double digit years, I guess. Uh, Lion, his shard, we talked about the the magic immunity bullshit that they added in. We Dude, saw Ursa's on display. His is legit. super strong. Now Bane's is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So Bane Shard gives you like this AOE brain sap, which theoretically makes him a little bit better against like illusion type heroes. Like we Way saw the better. same treatment with Dazzle, like sheeping units as well. So you're seeing these supports that are getting a little bit more versatile. Uh, so I'm interested to see how Bane fares in this I, patch. I legitimately think Bane is the best five. I played it literally once, but I was in an 8K game and I was playing position five. And usually that means just like one in 17 instant loss. But I was Bane. And I got the Ag Shard, and I was just able to like sit in side lanes pushing. Like Bane is a pusher and, and a, a wave clear now, which is, I mean, that's literally been the, like anytime anybody's talking about why Bane is bad, it's like, well, you know, he does all these other things, but he can't push waves. That That's yeah. always the narrative with this hero. Mm -hmm. And then the Aghanim Scepter, the new Ags, reducing the cooldown on, on the um, the grip by 45 seconds and creating two illusions. New Ags is unbelievably busted if, if you can get to it. And it feels like games are going later and supports are getting more gold because of the bounties and the, the more passive gold you get and things like that. So I, I legitimately, I want to make a prediction. I think Bane's going to be considered OP in like two weeks. Everybody's going to be banning this shit. It's like, now, it's are, not quite Beastmaster level, but it's up there. Are you sure you weren't carried to victory? Are you sure you're not a little bit... Bro blinded by the light, I legit I legit I'm considering making a video about it cuz I place I place a dank ass position 5 ward okay with ether lens it was this ward nobody knew it we killed Brax he was enigma Rioya jumped him he wasn't expecting a ward to be there hit a big grip in the fight they couldn't cancel it cuz I had two illusions gripping as well it's legitimately like it's hard to get carried on Bane because the hero is just so good right now okay Look yeah. so yeah I didn't get carried is basically I think... what I'm saying I, I know that's what you're saying, but whether that's the truth or not is an entirely okay. different matter. All right, mister, I'm going to farm triangle as an offlaner, for God's <laughs> sakes. Hey, it's Abaddon Trade Radiance. Up. I almost won the game for us. You, you very Echo impressed. Saber Radiance, very important. You mentioned the Echo Saber. Yes, anyway. the Echo Saber is very crucial. Okay. <laughs> Gets fighting immediately. Uh, I'm uh, with you, gentlemen. Draft here. Only good stuff about Bane. Plus, Necrobook being gone, a lot of those heroes, like, you know, uh, oh, old yeah. Beastmaster Necrobook, which is gobble up Bane. Like, food, that's true. So you don't that's have to true. worry about any of that anymore. Cool yeah, that's see. a whole meta that's gone. Uh, Coddle's still back. He got some changes I saw, but uh, you know it's just kind of shifted around a bit, right? You get the shard now to get the recall. Is that how it is? And then yeah, you get the healing yeah. blast is now just a part of his uh, spirit form, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but nice. he's still got the same toolkit, so he's still got the same purpose. I think he can kind of still do the same job. <clears throat> so I don't see any reason why this hero is just going to get cast inside. I th tell me what you guys think about this, if this is BS or not. But I, I feel like with this. Uh, Coddle, the Coddle recall being on the shard now is not as big of a deal as people would think in terms of a nerf because everybody gets TPs when they die now. So it's like everybody's running around with just infinite TP scrolls and like holding their TPs and just so you can stock them up when you're when you're dead. Um, <clears throat> and so I feel like later on in the game, that's when the recall is going. It becomes good. Like less people are going bots as well in this patch because like the TPing around early just isn't that valuable because everybody has tons of TP scrolls. So uh, I think. The Ag Shard, like, with with the timing that exists in the current patch for, like, when you want to TP around, the recall is just as good as it was, but then now you have this plus healing thing in the early game yeah. for some, like, five manning with Caudal stuff. I, I actually think Caudal might be might be better than he was yeah. because of that. I'd say his biggest downside, man, this draft finished quick, was that he lost a, quite a bit of the cast range because of the talent being taken away a bit, but this draft ended True. real quest. So if you could make a fast final prediction for this one, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Suns fans, since Jenkins had a moment just there. Oh, God, I really like Troll Warlord, and the shard sounds really interesting, where if you're in melee form, it gives your entire team 25% status resist. But, and it's actually technically really good against uh, Ursa, because if you get Aghanim Scepter as well, you can 
dispel the overpower, but I like five man minuses line up more. It's in your face, a lot of damage. I can't see Picado Squad going up against. Anyway, uh, since I've done reading every Harry Potter book ever made, apparently, uh, I'm that, gonna go with Picado that's Squad. That's uh, a compliment. Uh, be quiet. Uh, I'm gonna go with Picado Squad. I think Bane is OP, and so is Puck. All right. That's the panel. Let's go ahead and get real quick into a break. When we come back, we got Trent and Lyrical back on the mic to bring you the coverage. Dota fans out there, it was a quick draft. We're ready to go. Game number one of our second series today. How you doing, Trent? What's oh, up, get them in there quick. We got to right. go. The game's happening. Try my best is what they say. Wow, oh you're the best as All they right, kill let me, them. Let me catch you up. So first off, there was a question mark from Liza who said, you can play Tusk? To which WR replied, try my best. Mind you, while he was typing, the five of them ran into him and killed him and gave him the, wow, <laughs> your best. To which WDR excused himself with the typings. Easy bait. I mean, he baited himself. Lies, what are you doing, my man? Spicy. Well done. Well done, Lies. Amazing. This, this is some serious mental warfare. That's sick. I like that. You know, I think we might start seeing stuff like that in the future here. Sensibility has got to be a little bit more sensible and get out of here. Uh, although he does re recognize that there's a, a ward up on the high ground and now potentially a little bit of battle. They've already used the snowball, so they can't dodge the silence. So much damage coming out as they take down one for one so far. Also getting the ward. Um, a hell of a battle already breaking out here between Picado Squad and the, uh, the wonderful five-man Midas. Good stuff. Yeah, you know, Tusk ends up getting the rune, so some sweet <laughs> salvation. Got an assist, too. Punching back, you know. That's right. It needs to happen. Uh, and he's going to place his ward now as well up here on the top side of the map. Uh, just to make sure that he can see whenever those rotations come around. And, you know, if Dota the 2 does happen to throw out some Illuminates from over on that side of the map as well, it's going to be good to watch for. Uh, but yeah, an interesting one that we've got here. Uh, the draft got done so quickly. We got right on into it. It felt like these teams knew what they wanted to play right out of the bat. And, uh, mm. you know, we've got ourselves, I think, kind of like a boring mid, but everywhere else looks kind of hype. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, how often does a patch come out? And it feels like people are talking about supports the most. Mm. That, that's pretty rare. But at least for now, there's a lot of questions about supports. I guess because shards are the hot thing and supports can afford shards. So this question of like, you know, we saw the Warlock shard and how good that was. And now we're seeing this, like the Lion shard and the Bane shard. Like the two will be watching this game. And this Bane one, I haven't got to see in the action yet. It seems ridiculous. Yeah. The fact that, sure, you only get secondary targets healing for 25%, but you still do the full damage on your AOE brain sap. That seems kind of strong. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that some of it also is just like, if you think about the balance design wise, uh, as uh, the courier goes down mid, nice play there by P1 able to take that. Uh, but like, you know, carries, it's very possible that they can get their shards early on. Uh, or rather, like at a decent time, his Aikster is just gonna get ran down as well. Sensibility already able to get involved in that kill as well. Um, so I guess that naturally, like the, the support shards are just gonna be a little bit better more often than not, I think. Yes, and it, it helps that like a lot of the cheaper support items are also much worse than they used to be. Right. Like four staff and stuff. They, they've all been like nerfed over time. Even Glimmer has been um, tuned down quite a bit. So, you know, you get one of the items. You don't necessarily need the other. And you just want that shared at 20 minutes. And the timing tends to line up pretty well. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, uh, we can see that uh, we're going to have P1 actually look for the jaunt up to the top rune and then rl is gonna go and take the other one doesn't want to give away two free bottle charges at the very least uh so puck not quite able to make the move that we saw earlier where he could snag both of the runes but still uh pretty good stuff there and keeping the pushing on as down bottom gonna have to find a way to contend with this uh lies blood seeker it is a lot of spam harassment even against the troll yeah, I wonder if we'll start seeing like mid Blood Seeker potentially with these runes. That, that was one thought I had. I was trying to think like, what mid spams really well at level one? You right. know, because Blood Seeker has the best one in the entire game uh, with the pure damage at level one of 120. It is uh, totally busted. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, for a little bit of comparison's sake, Brain Sap 150, or rather 75. Uh, that's at level two that it's 150 and Aikster might actually go down again. Can they get another right click off? Throws out the axis, but it's not going to be there. Nearly got him there. Just just clipped uh, a little hair on the back of his neck, but it wasn't enough. Oh, no pretty disgusting here. I don't think he does a lot of shampoo up there. No, not what they do. 
Dota to the two gets pummeled one more time. DNM actually gonna pressure back onto Duffy here. Has nice. another Earth Shock in a second uh, because of that Chakra Magic, and the rundown continues. Duffy, he's just dead. Wow, that's that's no orb either. I mean, to be fair, he has boots and the DP doesn't, but uh, I mean, she's obviously a pretty fast hero. So, uh, great use of the coddle there. Nice, nice combo. Dota the two. Oh, two in the Chakra. Does it again? What but a guy. He just can't be up here now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's got. He's two zero two. Uh, yeah, I don't think you want to be here. Yeah, that sounds like a bad place to be, to be honest. Uh, as it looks like they did get a refill again Radiant's on P one for the bottle room, but uh, gets the pressure back there yet again. And DP gonna have to be super careful uh, unless Tusk is nearby. As actually, those are the two running back home on the coddle. So uh, or just DC. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. That was weird. He's going. He really wants his boots and this ward. That's one yeah. of those where you're like, you're watching the rest of the map, trying to see how everything's going. You forgot that you were just moving for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess he, he wasn't really needed. Maybe there was nothing to stack at the time or something. Was trying yeah. to get home and then back in time. Yeah, he was trying to get back in time to stack here. Mm. Oh, it's going to be close. Fire it out. Fire it out. Oh, yeah, he got <gasps> Nice. Very Slump nice. Played. Wow, what a gamer. Oh no, oh no! Oh, he no, got no, neither of them. No, 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 look away from the Trent, Trent, no. Oh, nuts. Well, hey, he almost had the big brain play. We'll keep our eyes on that. Uh, obviously wanting to get into a lot of those stacks for that, uh, you know, Ursa later on. So he's probably gonna have an amazing timing on his battle fear here with the good start that he's had already. RL like in the mid? Yeah, I like that play he just did where he just like, throws out the dragon tail on him. I mean, you're a Pux, you don't really take patience. It doesn't do anything for you. But with the thirst bonus, he just harasses him down and says, yeah, get into my lane. I'm taking your tower. And he didn't do any sort of like cheeky orb plays or anything. So he's, he's gonna be a hot minute getting back here. And in that meantime, RRL actually gonna tank the tower here for a little bit. Ooh, another good dragon tail, but the nightmare comes out. And they're gonna trade that over onto Coddle. Aikster making the move over. Almost found the two-person stun, but Sensibility now also in more trouble. They have another Dragon Tail. Ewan kind of has to be careful here. Goes out the Dragon Tail, not able to jaunt away. A couple more punches, and he's on his head and horse down to bottom as well. Gets the DD now. Damn, dude. They're having a good early game. That's uh, a pretty good defense, though. I mean, it, it costs you support life, but that was a catapult wave and a DK ulti. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and your puck had to run all the way home. I feel like I'd be kind of pleased with this. My, my question would be, how does P1 actually utilize this Dream Coil now? Because he has a DK, a Bloodseeker, and an Ursa. So, like, the Bloodseeker is the easiest target, but he's also in the least desirable spot to gank. Yeah, that does set up for a really weird situation. There's no way to like break the coil naturally either. Um, well, we'll have to you see. You know, until we have the walrus kick, then then we're of good. course. Yeah. A any any moment now. Yeah, should be. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the first roast just drop one of those now? <laughs> exactly. One of these days. Well, it is uh, still, I would say, a, a strong start for sensibility at least at the beginning. Uh, is able to be involved in a couple of kills. And now they're just trying to secure some more farm here for the troll so we can get into his items. And those two gets a little pushback because they're making that rotation. They have exorcism now, so maybe this is the play. Go all in with this one. I, I like popping this early because I, I just want them to leave. I don't even like want to kill Dina necessarily. Sure, it'd be great if we could, but I don't think you're assuming you're going to catch him. Okay. Like you coil him and what? He's just gonna enrage and run away, right? It's true. There's I... no point coiling this Ursa. Uh, they actually might. Well, no, they're not actually even gonna be able to fully get the tower here. That's they... fine. They're, they're forcing everyone top. I think this is okay. Now the problem is you need to actually finish the kill mid. Right. The chase continues. RRL is just gonna get the salve and walk away. What an odd series of events happening as they kill the tusk but they managed to get away with everybody else. And now an Invis Puck is gonna make this move, but uh, they lost the tower. <laughs> wow. That was not good. Yep, very well played by the side of uh, Five Man Midas. Unreal. You need to try and get like the, the nightmare mid into actual rotations for the kill mm -hmm. onto IRL, but they couldn't convert. 
I think we're just seeing, you know, some of that experience that they gained throughout the, the last season as well of these map movements, something that we've seen as being super important for the Division One games. Uh, and they're just uh, been able to make some pretty solid moves here, taking that tower. Not the end of the world, certainly. It's but. so hard to take towers versus this 5 main minus lineup, though. Yeah. Like, heroes that I want to try and delay the game. Coddle Bloodseeker. Two excellent heroes for doing this. Just max your blood right. How do you take a tower this early with uh, with this guy, right? Because yeah. you your main siege engine is Duffy's Threat of the Exorcism, but Duffy doesn't want to get ruptured. Because mm -hmm. at this point in the game, getting ruptured is probably a death sentence for her on the DP. Just look at what RL's doing right here as well. I mean, Duffy's making that move over, but keep on just eating these Coddle Blasts. They've got three heroes down here. Uh, likewise, Five Man Midas making that rotation as well. It does provide some pretty nice space, uh, at least for the moment. Uh, it's actually being taken up right now by the Bane up top. But, you know, let's get a free lane to himself. I love how these Illuminates down bottom are just hitting. Like he, he got Duffy again. He's just slapping anyone else who's hiding in the trees. Ooh. Exorcism in five seconds. Sensibility's pushing solo top. It has the TP. Problem is, they don't have enough catch unless they get a TP of the Bane into a snowball or something. But I think they're just going to keep chipping away here. They still have half the DK LT to go. Sensibility's actually kind of safe, too, since they knew that a lot of heroes were there and actually going to get the uh, coil used. Back towards mid with the rupture on P1 has to dodge that silence. But he's hanging out for a moment and... All that action down bottom doesn't lead to the tower being taken. So and he didn't even have the arcane when he used the coil either. Yeah. So that's still a very long cooldown. Hmm. Well, ulti's used both the dragon form and the puck coil. So we get to that 10 minute mark now. Net worth leads slightly in the lead of uh, five man Midas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you steal that that creep of the braid set. Way to go, sensibility. <laughs> Utilizes uh, the vision he had that the Earth was jungling and comes and snags it. And they did ping like, hey, there's a ward here somewhere, but uh, they'll, they'll be okay with that. There's enough yeah. mystery to it. True enough. Looks like uh, we're going to have PSG, the old Picado squad game, and probably getting the tier one tower up top now. Sensibility has six pretty hard to make the move down here even with lion six he actually smokes underneath the ward they know he's there gonna break it immediately nightmare and now with people tp'ing in they're actually just gonna pop exorcism lion trying to back away does have the stun throws it out onto two oh rl do you, do you try and go for a deny no he's trying to get out of here uh he doesn't have a tp though in some trouble the tower is already dead he can't get any help he's just gone yeah, he went up in the wrong spot there. Some sort of a miscommunication in terms of the defense being offered to that top tower, I think, because they had the heroes for it. Right. Now, though, the two instead is just going to grab this wave down bottom and try and use the creep wave to force something here. Another one comes through, and even Lai is coming to cover. Has the rupture. Almost has an Atos, in fact. Okay. Oh, very farmed right now for the uh, Bloodseeker. All of the cores are about the same level with a slight lead for the Ursa. But getting this mid tower would be a nice little get for PSG as they try and take this one down with the troll. Doesn't have the battle fear yet, but with the phase boots, can get pretty active. Uh, Ursa at this point just still sitting on his brown boots, but he has the done battle fury and opting to go for more of the farming route. As they do take the tower, but the stun now coming from RRL. Blinding light pushback. Heals back up afterwards with the brain sap. And ulti down. Nothing gained. Five man Midas losing out a little bit on this lead. Does have a movement speed advantage. So catches up to Tusk there. But, you know, with the rest of the team nearby, it's too ch uh, hard to chase this one out. And, oh, nice smoke. I like this a lot. Going after the, the Dragon Form's ending. They're actually chasing on a DNM, though, and they are not going to get any time. He's got the read on the, uh, the map movement here. Yeah. This is an ambitious Radiant's smoke. Big payoff had they caught him. Uh, they'll just find nothing as they investigate this bottom lane. And in fact, they had a read on that. Now they actually want to go and fight them. Okay. I, I, I thought that it was going to be a PSG smoke over to the other side. Uh, sensibility, his smoke breaks. Now they realize Lizer over there. Shards immediately connects. Oh Atos is going to come out. 
And the rupture, the silence, gets thrown, sensibility chased, and he's actually just walking away from the rupture. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> they don't care. Abilities used, no kills gotten. Now they want to link up with their troll. Yeah. No run through the jungle. Uh, his timing, not quite as good as the Ursa's. But I uh, had a few more build-up items, obviously, as ZNM still rocking the uh, the brown boots and the, the magic wand. But of course, his own acceleration should keep him well ahead as he heads towards that blink dagger. Gonna be a bit of a naked Ursa. Yeah. Uh, counting on the uh, the caudal, I feel like. It's true, yeah. Although he, he's not even maxing his Earthshock, actually. So, I mean, not that you want to, but I'm, I'm trying to think of ways that this works, you know what I mean, with one item. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit weird for sure. I guess he just feels like he needs to be able to get on top of him at that point, rely on everybody else holding the place. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Silence comes out. He just, again, some more of the new, uh, you know, vision that we're seeing with the patch and everything. I feel like uh, WDR has a lot of big play potential in this game. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can snowball save, and it tends to be a very good hero versus Bloodseeker. Yeah. I love going for the drums, too. I feel like this yeah. item is starting to look really cool, and uh, sports is trying to pick it up more often. And on Tusk with Tag Team, it's just so sick. Yeah, I think it comes back to this uh, team fight that we're having a lot of, too, and like just how much they decide the game. Um, that was very prevalent in the last patch, too, was, like, the mid-game Roche team fight seemed to be where we wound up as a meta, you know? Right. Even at the major. Those totally. were the big defining factors that uh, decided the games. So every aura that you have and uh, popping those charges is extremely useful. Sensibility? He's gaining on him. Oh, he came back for that brief fire. Oh, he's waiting for the rest of his team. He thinks that they can get here in time to save him. He's hood. Jump in. Trying to make it work. The stun comes out. Still the grip of the big old fight. And P1 takes so much damage. Oh, he plays forward with the rupture. He dies. A double kill afterwards, but three going down. PSG. And can they find any more afterwards? They don't have Atos for another six seconds. But a good fight win so far. Yeah, that was a hell of a blink reveal. He just did almost 3,000 damage there in that team fight. DNM just hops in on top of a couple of heroes and starts swinging. And uh, with the help of the Battle Fury there, uh, you know, they don't have vacuum or anything, but they were clumped up. So yeah. he just uh, shredded them with those big old claws. And I'm sure uh, thoughts of Roche may be creeping into their heads here. They don't have the, the best lineup outside of the Ursa, though. Right. Yeah, and with Exorcism coming back up, they could maybe take that fight around there. Uh, granted, it is another 30 seconds until Coil's up, so I don't know. We'll see Lies, how it goes. Uh, Lies has the medallion, too, so and they are heading towards it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this uh, Soul Crest is so cheap now, too. Right. Guys, get this item. You got a crown. You got a wind lace. Well, I mean, you got one this four, but with your medallion, too, it's just it's nice. Yeah. Definitely, particularly for that offlane role, I think. I just feel like that, that ultimate orb costs so much money. And just upgrading a medallion actually makes it feel pretty valuable with the attack speed and everything. Oh, yeah, the, the pieces are just nice. There's a ward up here for Dyer, which is going to spot as soon as that smoke breaks. They see P1 up on the high ground here. And now revealing Duffy just outside of it. Uh, but there is also that radiant ward. It's up on the high ground as well. So a lot Duffy. of vision. Yeah, Duffy's be really careful because Duffy cannot get Athos. If the Athos flies out, like, what's the answer? Oh, I'm going to Yule's Radiant myself, and then DK is going to be sitting there, or Lion's going to be sitting there. Right. Uh, it's be, I think that was a bit risky the positioning there, but <laughs> sensibility catches him with the, uh, the Nightmare and the Sentry. But those other two will survive. Yeah, decide to not go any further as there were heroes rotating over and doesn't want to use the uh, grip on the coddle, which understandable. Sensible play from sensibility. Going to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Ooh, this is a better target, though. TPing out right now on Dota the two. He was trying to defend the tower, which does leave the Bloodseeker alone, but they won't go on lies. Okay. Yeah, more heroes were rotating from the mid, too, so they, they would have got busted if they'd gone for it. Very skirmishy sort of position-based game we've got going here. Gold and a lot of smokes where it feels like they know it's... Oh, that's a DD, though. Oh, my God. Are they just going to get a nice, free Roche nice. off of this? That's how we do. Wow. That's how you get back into a game. 
Damn, dude. Well, tier two for Roche, but I, I mean, they're, they're heading over there now. I wonder if they can get there in time. This is going to be close. Nah, nah. Look, I mean, look at the other three heroes. They're so far away down bottom. It's true. I if they all t TP to the oppos. I mean, the one thing is they do have a blinding light just ready to go. Oh, the spirit form is about to wear off as well. Yeah. I don't know. This is going to be tough. Yeah, I, I, you're right. I don't know if they're going to be able to get there in time. Hey, Coddle, why don't you just recall them? <laughs> oh, it's it's too soon. I'm curious. Got a, a minute and a half. Yeah. I, I wonder if he actually waits for that one or if he wants to commit fully for the uh, Aghanim Scepter. Because he's got the yeah. Ag Scepter queued up right now. That's a good question. Probably you just take the Ags. Just wait. Yeah. I guess with this lineup, too, there's ah. like needing more control which is the interesting question too it kind of comes down to how much split pushing are psg doing and uh can your can your pull in hero secure a kill in combination with you but if mm. it's a puck split pushing calling in an ursa you're probably not going to kill the puck that's true well calling in a lion hey oh you be close i like that idea pull down on it when you buy it i actually don't even remember now probably the same it's like it's before. like 16 or something Sure, that sounds great. <laughs> I'm, I'm Googling it, don't worry. I got it, guys. Man, DD tag team. 15. Ah, oh, damn. They were good. You idiot. <laughs> Unacceptable. Yeah, fired. Oh. We get closer and closer to it. That Aegis does change the complexion of this game, but I'm curious if Five Man Maestro is willing to go now, actually. They're still in dragon form for a little bit of time, and it looks like they're spoiling for a fight but versus on the other side of the map boss for zone too nice okay so split push going to continue here p1 doing a good job of keeping this pressure on this top tower uh, and again much like division one it feels like uh, there's a lot of different things that could end up happening in this division two league and these matches so important for some of those later game seedings and get the D word. Everybody grouped up around this side, five heroes together. And on the other side of the map, you can just see P1 taking away that outpost. It's the tier two tower. They're doing it. Yeah, his map movement has been very good this game. In combination with sneaking that road, so they have some excellent calls over the past five minutes or so. How does squad gaming? So they, yeah, they actually just don't have any outposts now despite them feeling like they were the ones in control yeah. and now puck has a blink he's been doing this without a blink dagger yeah, dude's killing it going for the lincoln's next and that's gonna allow that much more free map movement around the area hmm tough stuff now for five man midas i mean i guess yeah. the only play is wait out the ages oh well, on the one hand uh the shard comes earlier now Okay. Which means Ursa has a good chance of just getting one instead of having to buy it. Just pretty huge. Right. So that shard's gross. Oh. Let's see if that's the route they go. They do get this outpost back now. Uh, right oh, wait. The is he going to be like permanently enraged because of the caudal? Oh, my God. Oh, you're really Eight right. Eight seconds. Goes down to six <laughs> seconds. Oh, my God. And then he'll get hit with the chakra. So, yeah, if he has the shard, he can... <laughs> well, it's double jump, He, he can do a three-second straight enrage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Dude's going to be hopping around so much. I, I, I feel like... It's one of those things where, like, you know, if you had, like, a second charge of Chakra Magic or something, it would just make this hero ridiculous. But even as yeah. it is, this is going to be nuts. And you're hitting, like, the uh, your Magic the Gathering combo deck where you're like, <laughs> I have now summoned the five cards I need. I'm going to create 7,000 Muradin tokens. You lose. I, I like the official usage of the Muradin. Yeah, that's yes. good. I, had, I also had uh, Sapperling deck, too, that was like that, you know. Oh, wait, is that an actual <laughs> thing? I thought you were just making noises. No, no, it's actually Mirodin, I think, or Murodin was the set name. Oh, wow. I, I, I literally thought you were just making things up. That's great. No, I love that. No. What a nerd. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> well, 
2,000 gold lead still, in spite of uh, all the good things going the way of the squad gaming over the past couple minutes. And uh, it's sort of just feeling like one of those very positional based games where you're, you know, going for these smokes and see if they connect or not. Yeah, Random who has illusion. the vision game, right? Yeah. It's one of those. I mean, right now it looks like it's uh, PSG here. I, where are the wards for the Dire? Are they, they just all been killed or something? I don't know, man. Bottom tower uh, they're attack. nowhere to be found. Are uh, that's not the way you want to be playing some dotes. It's going to be tough for them. Radiant are scanning. I guess they could be holding on to him to play Dying some later or just like not picking him up yet since they know they're not going to be making moves all that much with the uh, Aegis there. Coddle has one on him. He's got some more in the inventory. Yeah, he's bought another one. I'm, I'm thinking that they must be maxed out though because he would have bought some more right there. Right. I think they've just gotten a lot of good D-Wards. So I mean, set the ability, look at him. He's, he's literally, look at his quick fight. It is nothing but odds and sentries. The guy is just Radiant spamming <laughs> wards across the entire map. I love that. I like this guy. That's I, I want to get to know set the Oh, yeah. Buy one, queue another one up. <laughs> this is my guy right here. You know what? He has them queued right now in the order they're going to respawn for him. That's the way it's going to go. They're all done. That's actually not the way that works. No, it's okay, though. His brain is uncontainable, unfathomable even. All right, I see five heroes gathering up and a courier flying in. We all know that means the smoke is coming. So bring your wards, go to the two. See if you can find an enemy hero. WDR is just solo gonna ice shares this wave. <laughs> Immediately, this, this, this I is see not five even arrows. Worth it. Don't go, don't go. No, go anywhere else. <laughs> he wants this. Ah, oh, team. Oh, no. No. Oh, throw to the two. He's in there. Oh my god. The it's... timing was actually so good that his the smoke popped uh... and then he TP'd. That couldn't have gone any better. Picado Squad Gaming. They get the well five man Midas, they get their uh their outpost oh. back. Oh, sensibility. He smells something. Where are they? <laughs> that an enemy ward? Oh, it's, it's near Dude, me. This invis run. Oh wait, but he's walking in vision. Jump forward, stun out. Can't get himself out of this one for the moment. Silence now onto two. Jump forward. Able to catch onto the DP. Try to get over the nightmare save. And then the snowball save afterwards. Oh, PSG, they're playing pretty right now. Chase down to be dead, though. Blow him up. Couldn't get away. Ursa's still a scary hero when you're able to chase him down. Look at the ravage coming out from Aegster afterwards. Now the silence. Tries to get the rest of them out of here as the phase shift dodges that silence. QQ going to get chased down as they're looking for a few more. Can they get him? Oh, the chase. Silence yet again. He has his stun, stun back up. QQ trying to escape. Can they get into range? Just outside of it, they will. And now the beatdown will commence. Good play from Five Man Midas. Yeah, they, uh, it looked good, as you said, at the start for PSG. But then they used the grip on the enraged bear while his BKB was also running. And GNM just like... I like how he covered both. He didn't like kick or a range or anything so he got right back into the fight and just yeah. started chomping into people as he said and uh duffy probably the the biggest loser there in terms of like what the team required was trying to keep the fight going around him and they couldn't do it yeah maybe uh, again one of those things where like it it feels like you have all of these saves which are really good the nightmare save the snowball save but a versa gets on you you just get chomped such a scary hero with this much farm I don't know. I'll have to see how it goes from here. Uh, but big win for Five Man Midas. And they finally just got their hands on them, right? I mean, they've been running around this map as, as real nuisances for the past 10 minutes or so after Five Man Midas had themselves a, a bit of a nice looking lead, it felt like. Right. But uh, slowly that gets whittled away. And now now they finally kind of start taking a little bit more control back as we start heading towards that second roach with the Shard. And oh my oh. God. <laughs> Again, exactly the same. He's literally blinking on top of the puck. Ixer is like going in right now and switching to the quick cast. He's like, all right, not you know, I'm just gonna start spamming my W everywhere. He just needs to get some more movement speed, and then like he'll be done, right? He would have been there by now. By yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, three thousand gold lead, and they're gonna start running towards lies. Um, sensibility has there. fiend script, but they're gone. Zipped them right out of there with the coddle. Shared proving uh, very useful. Okay, we're just all 
Oh, yeah, there we go. Grouping up for the smoke. Here we oh, there was a Radiant Ward there, though. Right on top. Silence. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> the well instant pop and hop out. I do like the vision that they've controlled now. They've actually got some stuff going in the mid lane here. I mean, yes, unfortunately, they missed that one off as the mid, which gave it that whole play of way. Uh, and that's also going to signal that they're heading in towards uh, the Roche Pit for some scouting. It is a fast Roche, 20 seconds away now. Mm. Now we'll see if they stick around. One other check in there, and I think it would be right on time. But here wins the Roche fight, Gabe. Dude, I don't know. Like, DP seems good, but this this Ursa scares the crap out of me. It's got a BKB now? What the heck do you do? It's hard for the troll to use the, it's, you know, troll's tools against the Ursa that helps his team. Troll versus Ursa can, you know, can be kind of okay. There's, oh, there's a Basher now, so not so much. But between the BKB and the Enrage, it's like your own tools as troll just aren't really that helpful anymore. Well, they're going to smoke up now. PSG trying to make this move. Oh, he's a hungry bear. He wants all this. Oh, can he get it in time? They're moving in and they're not going to get there. And now the jump forward, the stun on the DP. Looking for the follow up. BKB out from Troll, though, and they're able to get to the other side. That's BKB yeah. down for Troll. This is huge. Jump forward, Duffy. It's obliterated. He's you know, oh. just trying to get a stupid shard, and he's like moving his Battle Fury, his boots. He's like, please. <laughs> Let me eat this thing. You can see the immediate play from the rest of PSG. They push these side lanes, want to get them dealt with. Uh, and it, yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating one. Okay, but how do they kill P1 now? That's a good point. I am not sure. Uh, they don't even have Coddle AoE actually. Hex. Okay. <laughs> we just need line level 25. I mean, this is this is gonna be a tough one for sure. Maybe like a Ursa blink forward, lucky bash. That's the play. Ethos? Yeah, between that or a synchronization with RRL and Aether. Oh my goodness! Well, it's his first uh, finger stack. <laughs> Fashionable and a flashy way to do it, I'd say. Oh yeah. Really good stuff uh, from Five Man Midas here. They're gonna push down this top lane now. Top tower. I mean, I, I guess at a certain point, does it even matter? Like, do they have to kill the fuck? Can they just, like, no. take all the buildings? No, they actually don't. In fact, I think that uh, should be part of their game plan is to mostly ignore him. But this is where you run into trouble is that whenever, like, sure, it's just Puck, but then suddenly he, he runs under the Ancients, takes the tower. And now Puck is going to start poking the tier three. Right. And you say, hmm, is the troll here? Is he gone? Is he picking up our bounty room? In the meantime, they're thinking about just going high ground. Of course, it's the five picking the troll. Hey, man, hey, can you get that? I really need that bounty room, man. Come on. I want my ghost. Thank you. Oh, oh no, your ghost. You just bought it. Oh, God. Good snowball save. But they're going in with this one now. BKB out from Duffy. Walrus punch. Going to connect. That's one life down. Long duration yeah. stun here. Trying to get the pushback. The grip. Or staff. They got him. In some trouble, but sure. it was the enrage. BKB's out afterwards. Needs to back away. QQQ trying to chase him outside. Not able to get any Lock type of lockdown. For this. And they will take down Dota the two likely Jeez. here. As the chase down continues. Can they find any more? Puck stuck up on the hill. Looking for the rundown. RRL gonna go for the TP out. Walrus Punch came back up in time. And they will take down the DK. Tragedy as they try and go high ground. WD oh man, sensibility, this guy. First off, he ensures they get the bounty room. That gets him the ghost scepter. Then he goes in, catches some spells, gets saved by WDR. Excellent play there, and that uh that essentially wasted the ages. Right. Like sure, yeah, you had the fiend script the enraged target. I mean the guy's got a shirt. He's always gonna be enraged. That's just a fact of life. Oh here we go, here we go. DNF's gonna do it. You guys ready? Oh why? He needed it. You know, sometimes you hit bash. And he had Abyssal Blade. Yeah, but he said the Lincolns. Oh, good call. You're so smart, Trent. Look at you. Well, you know. <laughs> Out of Abyssal. So, I mean, I'm really glad. I think Abyssal needed to go back to this because yeah. it was just, frankly, way too gross in its previous iteration. But that's going to feel bad for the carry players out there. It's I was recently watching old uh, old games, just actually mocking and laughing at Abyssal Blade, and <laughs> now it's just back. I don't know. 
I mean, the thing about it is, like, for Ursa in particular, this was the problem for that hero for so long, was it was like, you need a blink, and then you need these defensive items. You yeah. you always want that one more, and Battle Fury can get you there, because you get really farmed, but, you know, Troll's there, too. Troll's right there with Third, I think, alleviates the problem, though. Because okay. it reduces the cooldown of your jump, and it gives you bonus uh, protection that you don't need as much, like, defensive stuff. Right. So you can kind of afford to go blink and... Uh, the abyssal and i mean who wouldn't trade that for the existence of swift blink anyway let's be real that's true that, that thing's gross it's still insane who that's an illusion fine didn't use rupture we're good so yeah again we get back to this splitting the map type of thing uh -huh. and probably just gonna have to wait for that next roche would be my guess at this point uh, but Trent, who, who are you sort of feeling better about at this point in the game? Like, we've kind of seen it go back and forth, uh, and it feels like we're entering almost a new phase. Yeah, this is uh, a bit of a tough one to call. I, I think that they are going to hit a nice window when people gets this Aghanim Scepter. Just okay. doing a fantastic job this game. This is truly a uh, a bit of a solo effort right now, you know? I mean, Dota's a team game, but damn, this guy is... Uh, they're trying to put the team on his back Dyer's all these plays tower. around the Sun map and keeping them in this one they would certainly be out of it if it wasn't for a puck on this team yeah it's the perfect hero in this situation who can abuse their lack of catch it's not like their catch is bad it's just puck is so slippery right well and this Another is smoke scanning. where i feel like that shard is so useful as well to try and like you know catch the puck when he's split pushing to get that recall mm -hmm. working but it's not easy now they're going to smoke up as well. All right, here we go. Big attempt here. Do they have any wards on the radiant? They actually don't. So they're they're flying in here a little bit blind. Nothing to even drop down on this journey. And now they start taking the outposts. Of course, it's going to alert them. Oh, Puck mid? Can't though. They need anyone else. There they find them. Okay, a jump. Sensibility. That's not a bad target at all. Looking for more. Going to drums out of there. Duffy gets the escape. And WTR. There's no, way. There's no way. This guy can't live. Don't let him live. Oh, he has an FTP. All right, he's super dead. Okay. They take down WDR. A very good play there by Five Man Midas. Unfortunately for them, no Roche is up. So they still have to deal with this puck who's going to keep on split pushing against them. God, it is so hard to play against this hero right now with them. Yeah, and they didn't get the troll, and both these supports have buybacks. So, I mean, it's good because it still gives them more space in the map. They can farm the Radiant Ancient. It's uh, taking away some of the farm from the troll, but minimal gains in the end, especially with how much uh, map space it took them all to wander around there to even start that little incursion. Right. Yeah, it's true. God, look at this guy. He's just going for it. <laughs> he doesn't care. I guess what does he have to worry about? A we hex. <laughs> Guys, give me the tomes. <laughs> I'm going to get there, I promise. All right, for the next roast, we let Aixir get solo XP. <laughs> yeah, just leave it to the last hit, then he'll come in yeah. for it. DM is uh is getting there 23 and uh about uh, an eighth or so. Very similar for P12, so got a couple heroes gaming for 25. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh my no. goodness. I just... need uh, the synchronization, you know. Coil. All right, now, the pop it, pop it, Looking for it. Walrus Punch already out. They're leashed up. Good Impale coming out afterwards. Finding Light pushes them away. And now the Fiend Script onto Bloodseeker. Trying to break him down for the kill. Sensibility Ghost Scepter staying alive. DNM still dealing a ton of damage. As they pull multiple heroes inside that Snowball. DK just gets laid into by this troll. Now trying to take down Lies. That's a double kill. So DNM is on the run. Two for two, but it was two cores that got taken down as DNM doesn't really have that much more room to get back to the fountain. And a good impale again. Finger of death and they take down Deathy. Eggster, he wants his 25. Get it to him. All right, now I know that was rough at the end for Duffy, but Duffy made a very crucial play during that team fight. And that was that when they popped the Lincolns on the puck, Duffy ran into the tree lines and found the lion and chased the lion back to the high ground. Right. Which was huge, because then Aegster's forced out of the fight, and they couldn't even pounce on P1, despite having the Lincolns pop there. So that helps secure Dyer's all that uh, coil killed. play there uh, mm. between the troll and the puck. So, yeah, it cost Duffy's life in the end, but uh, well worth it, I think. Yeah. 
That's what you need to do. I mean, that's one of those things where suddenly the game could just fall apart. Because even after this, like, one fight, they can't really do much. Roche, it's a long spawn now as well. Minotaur Horn gets picked up. Uh, we'll also point your attention towards mid where there were two of the OBS dropped, which is a classic when you're in the midst of those fights. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. No, I switched it. I switched it. No, I didn't switch it. <laughs> uh, Ursa also gets his oh, That's a coil I hear, huh? Uh-oh. Dead, my friends. I got him. Okay. Well done. I, yeah, I'm just coiling and killing people. Don't worry about me. DK is like in there and people are still just grabbing people. Dude, this guy is crazy. I mean, he's playing around so much good vision. They're finally going to take some of it out, but like, he one's killing it. Yeah. Even had an arcane too, so just uh, 24 seconds away from me. Oh! Oh my god. Okay. Please, no, that's cool. No. <laughs> Why? What is this? A game of some sort? He knows. Yeah, he he knows. knows. He knows. We're all watching. Oh my god. All right, Dream Coil, Rapid Fire, and now, as soon as he picks up the Spell Prism, he's starting to build Octarine. Oh, no. That's a Dota player right there. That's what that is. I like that a lot. Jump forward, Coil. Try and get the pushback. That's the snap, and Enrage already happened. Now Exorcism. Looks for Dota the two. That's the four staff away. The ghosts are chasing him. Oh, sensibility. Okay. He's found the, the BK before BKB. They're, they're still not gripping him, though. They, they want this kill without it. And they get it easily with the troll and the DD both rotating. So they just want to save their spells. And they're thinking, oh, Roche is definitely going to be up, right? Go no. WDR. You, you find it. Oh, bump, bump. Oh. No. I mean, he knows it's going to be soon. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely frustrating, that situation right there. And... I mean, no DK, he does have buyback. I don't think that you try and use it here at all. They're gonna try and force him back again, but the Hex comes out, Solar Bind as well. Really Nightmare. frustrating. Fun to get the Impale. Nightmare keeps off that silence. Blinding Light pushed back again, still ruptured. I just got Satanic anyway, no cares. Oh, cool, I'll just two shot my HP back. <laughs> and now they're gonna head on into the pit. So Ag all Scepter right. this time. All right, now we give that to the Tusk. So the uh, probably troll, obviously some extremely good Agnims. Also has a really cool shard. I've, I've yet to see this Rampage. Mm. Right. So the thing about it is that you don't get both of them. So you right. just get the one, which is a little bit weird. Ooh, Not troll? they give it to DP. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Okay. I mean, it's not living very long. <laughs> no, but you know, maybe that's, I guess part that's of what it. she's hoping for. Yeah. Well, Mr. Duffy. Forty minutes. Uh, Radiant has all of their items, as do the Dyer. Uh, they also managed to pick up a leveler, but opting for the Pentedge Sword on the Ursa for now, at least. Um. We'll have to see how this one goes is they've lost all their outer towers at this point. They still have some vision down on the map. It's really been a battle of just these wards and where everything's going. But they're going to try and hold Man. out for now. The shard would actually be so good because then he can uh, get that stats resistance. Mm. Like the halberd and stuff, right? Now that's out there from the, the Ursa. That's a good point. Seems like a super worthwhile investment, especially when you're like kind of stocked on slots anyway. Right. I feel like the uh, Halberd. Like the best. Shouldn't you spy like right now? It seems like a, a big oversight. I feel like if you're going high ground in those ages and you have 1400 gold over your buyback, this seems like the perfect. Oh, coil there onto both. He doesn't have it for the moment. Stunned, but Enrage was already there from Diana. Abyssal backs out afterwards. Cobble's the only one dead. RRL in trouble though getting beaten into by this troll, walks away afterwards, lies, trying to beat into Tusk. Snowball onto RL, he blinks back. Now Tusk's out of position, but he gets the blink out. Over on the other side, they found Sensibility all alone with the buyback on Kato and lies now running super fast. Just want to chase down a couple more if they can. And they take down QQQ. Oh, good play there. Breaks the Lincolns immediately afterwards into the stun. Very nicely played. And now controlling up that DP, DNM trying to look for a bash, finds it, another oh, nightmare. nightmare save! 
defensibility with the buyback makes the play happen. They're all living through this one. Duffy eventually does fall, but the damage has been done. They lost two and now looking for more. Go to the two. This is going to be a buyback, but RRL comes in for the save. DNM trying to walk out of there as RRL gets chased, but they got their eyes on the prize. They want DNM solar mine. He's so slow. Just trying to get out of there. Jumps over the wall. DNM gets the snowball chase forward and now has to buy back as the fight is continuing inside the base. DNM wants to get the chase down. Can he do it? He gets bashed. And then the walk away yet again. This enraged the chase down does not manage to find it. P1, he will not be denied. Dude, with this freaking, oh, the bash, no, he's dying. The glass cannon finally shatters. All right, he deserved that so hard for that <laughs> play. insane. Oh my God. And they didn't take a building. <laughs> These guys are wild. Oh man, there's so much to download in that fight. I don't even know where to start. I mean, how about the fact that there was 15,400 damage done by Puck? That's a pretty good place to start. <laughs> Oh my he God, used three quail three coils. coils. <laughs> That's all it shows. That's like the only info that you need. <laughs> oh my God, man! What a nightmare save from yeah. sensibility on a Duffy gets the the dodge on the finger down. Like, come on, that was too good. I liked it a lot. That was some sick stuff right there. Well, Forty three minutes in and twenty to twenty two. It's a seventeen thousand gold lead right now. PSG. It's up top. They're going to try and run at this troll a little bit. See if they can get something done to him. Radiant Jump. Finds it there with the stun. Follow up commit. Uh? Finger. Everything used. And well, he was just at the wrong place oh. at the wrong time, Trent. They're back, baby. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, that that's like the freest kill. How did that happen? They have wards in the base. I don't they, know. He <laughs> knew they were out there. I don't know. That's a tough one. Hey, you're, not, you're not supposed to die there. Imagine if they force the buyback and kill the troll. They, they can actually just get back into this game. That's all yeah. it takes in Dota. And and when you're 44 minutes in, it's sure it's a 14k goldie, but it, it's just, it's not over. You know, it, it right. doesn't matter. You have Ursa. People will just blow up and explode. It's true. And, and you, you know, know, this is where I think some of that, that experience, again, uh, you know, coming into play a little bit here. This team, they played a bunch of matches against those top teams. Never give up attitude. You got to have it. All right, Lair Claw. Don't, don't look at the puck, okay? Don't look. Okay. How much HP do you think puck has? Uh, less than 2,000. <laughs> it's 3,000. What the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is he so big? Why is he so tanky? What? He's got some fat health items, man. He's got 14 attributes from his Lincoln Spear. He's got an Octarine oh, Core. He's got right. an Agonim Scepter. For the twin. All right. Beefy. Jump in, coil, grip, everything used. Trying to take down lies. Force staff to keep him alive. It won't happen. It's not enough. RRL, meanwhile, jumps onto the tusk. Drops a fireball onto his head. He's trying to snowball to a dragon that's not even there anymore. Manages to get the walk away. Five man Midas with Troll coming back alive. I think they have to retreat. Ooh, shard not going to connect. And go to the two. two. Oh, he got, oh, oh. Was, was he that the, Dustin hit? Was he in the. I think he's in was the, he the, in the hiding place. He might have been in the hiding place. He was in the hiding place. place. I think he was. I think he was by the torch. So for people that don't know, underneath that torch, there's like a hidey spot where people, you, you can't see them, right? That's what yeah. it is? Yeah, if you're like right in there or over here, plant your techies mines, the fog's weird. Now, my I haven't checked since the last major update, but probably still works that way. Either that or the dust didn't connect, not sure. Oh, they killed the creep that he was TPing into. Puck's not there for this one yet. He's zooming though. Yeah, that's true, he's a fast guy. Exo still going as the tier three tower finally does manage to fall. And they're actually gonna nightmare to pull, uh, or rather force staff RL back up afterwards. So Glyph used, but they're beaten away on to this tower. Take down the observer ward, all right. and they're gonna call it with that. Ixer, it's time for Ixer's huge big brain play, all right? You ready for this? Yes. So P1 keeps throwing the Lincolns on the troll, right? Mm -hmm. 
So what they need is they need vision in the back of the team fight, so they know when they can jump. Because they they're always saying they throw forward with the Lincoln, which means if the the lion just blinks in with the Aeon disc, then he might be able to get a hex onto the puck. That's a good point. Now the only problem, of course, is that we do have the Octarine. So the cooldown on it is it true? It's not <laughs> fully reliable. <laughs> they're gonna have two of them, right? Yeah. It's it's almost overlapping where you can have two at once. I actually think it's worth yoloing though. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, worst case scenario is at least you're giving vision for someone else to jump in. That's it's not like you can do much as a, a line anyway if the puck's still active. God, this puck is just such a pain in their side. What a performance. Having a great game, P1 here. Showing out. I can't wait till this is a tinker patch again. This is what every game will be Please like, guys. Please stop. At least puck is impressive. <laughs> Dude, look at that. He just jumps in, breaks the smoke at the same time. QQQ's here. Killing off some illusions along the way, but they need to push out their lanes yet again. And PS just has been playing so safely. Remember when they defended the top tier three with that yeah. dive from the Aegis? Ooh, feels like a long time ago now. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think that was the last time it's had 75% chance for the old five man Midas. And it's right about, no, well, it's 80 now, I guess. For, uh, going the other way yeah yeah I mean I I still think that like like you had mentioned earlier all it takes is one or two slip-ups and this game can just completely flip on its head oh DK bought an eggs there's one in the pit though all right who's getting this one is it troll time or is it tusk time for some reason I just feel like they're gonna give it to the tusk just do it I like that it seems totally not the right play but I appreciate it nonetheless that's fair. So they point. could. Oh, actually, Puck already munched. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it should be troll. I'm hoping it's troll. <gasps> Sensibility, really? All right. We're all fiends gripping you. Oh man. I mean, it's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I thought we'd get like the coil stuff, but all right, let's go. No, they're not concerned about the coil. They're using three of them. It's gonna come back online before Walrus Kick will. Not true. So it's five second cooldown. Oh, that's pretty nice. All right, moving in. RRL slowed for a moment. Has that ulti if he wants to use it with the Agnums upgraded. Extra magic resistance, all the other good stuff. QQQ continues to beat away at this. They got to jump at some point. They decide to go right on the DP. Snowball not saved. It was the nightmare instead. They weren't able to catch him with it. Now thinking about going in on this one, still stunned for the moment. RRL drops the big old fireball right in the midst of all of them. And then tries to walk forward. Ah, oh, it's so hard to get on top There's of the him. There's the Fiend's grip afterwards. He didn't get the erase off. He's in trouble. The chase down isn't going to be enough. They take him down. No buyback. DNM, the big seconds. bad bear, gets he, out of there. He can He's come back. It. And they just, uh, well, they need to hold off that long. They Don't should fight. be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. Round they two, maybe. Naked, but they're, they're bare at least. They don't have exorcism again. Jump forward, silences out. He has that buyback. He's gonna need to commit it now. There's gonna be the jump in. Extra down low, four step, not able to keep a play. He has buyback too. They got the grip round two on a DK. That was the start. QQQ beats it to him. But look at the cheese on it, WTR. He's able to take it off, but can he get out of there? No, DNM still eats him up. They buy back yet again, disarm. Finger of death comes out, Aixter's in deep. Oh, he doesn't have a way out of this one. Where's the rest of his team? Nobody's there to help him. He's dead. So is the DK. Gone for a long time. Needed a bash there, but couldn't find it. They were keeping control of the troll, but everybody else moving back in now, and they're just going to focus on the Ancient. Eyes on the prize, and five-man Midas. Nowhere left to go. Good game is called. PSG did it. Who needs LGD? Picado Squad Gaming. Around these parts, we call that there a comeback, I'd have to say. All right, 28 minutes in, 20% chance of victory. Enemy team knocking on the front door saying, hello, little piggy. Yeah. I'd like to come take your throne. But that uh, that house was bricks, baby. They couldn't blow it down. No, it was too much. I like that reference as well. Man, I swear to goodness. Like the, 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 this game uh, right now, oh, Tusk also sold all of his items at the end. Uh, but it, 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 it felt to me like it was two teams that were really like just trying to play that vision battle and just outmaneuver each other 
uh, you could tell how much each of them sort of took this game seriously and like recognize how competitive it is in that division too. Like anything can happen down there in terms of like who moves up for the future. So. P1, 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 P1. I like that it. was insane. What a performance. I'm I'm actually so impressed. P1 and Sensibility played out of their minds that game. And alongside the rest of Picado, poor right. Duffy had to really tank quite a few uh, engagements <laughs> in that one. But, yeah. uh, you know, uh, P1 definitely gets to be the rock star of this show. Well, an impressive showing for P1. I'm wondering if we're going to see a puck band out next game. There's a chance. Or maybe they just pick some stuff that, you know, doesn't rely on single target blow up. We'll see. Uh, but game number two, right around the corner, everybody. We're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, the panel's going to break it all down. See you then.